This sucks it is here. Five miles off the coast of Maine and slightly overdue, a circus ship was streaming south and fog as thick as stew. On board were 15 animals who traveled to and fro. The next day it was Boston for another circus show. The Captain Mr. Carrington was honest and sincere. He thought that they should drop a hook and wait for things to clear. But Mr. Kane, the circus boss, was terribly demanding. He stomped up the helm where Mr. Carrington was standing and screamed, Don't stop! Keep going! I've got a show to do. Just get me down to Boston Town tomorrow, sir, by two. Then came a crash, an awful bash. Things flew into the air. The ship had smashed into a ledge that no one knew was there. The shattered ship began to tip, then sank without a sound. The splashing, thrashing animals swam round and round and round. The captain said to Mr. Payne, Pray tell, what shall we do? We can't just leave them here to drown. We've got to save them too. The animals, yelled Mr. Payne. Why, sir, what you are, a draft? It's me that you should rescue. Pull me up onto that raft. Now ferry me to safety, sir. Before I die of cold, don't question me, barked Mr. Payne. Just do what you're told to do. Through chilly water all night long, the animals swam on until they reached Island Beach just before dawn. They pulled themselves up on the shore, be dragged cold and beat, then staggered into a village on weary, wobbly feet. <laughs> That's a funny picture. The people in the neighborhood just had begun to rise. When they saw those animals, they had to rub their eyes. They thought they saw an elephant. But wait, how could that be? And what's that little monkey doing in the cherry tree? <laughs> Soon animals everywhere and into everything. There's an ostrich in the outhouse. There's a hippo in the spring. There's a tiger in the tulips. There's a lion on the lawn. There's a python in the pantry. It went on and on and on. Mr. Hood was stacking wood and nearly jumped a mile when he found an alligator sleeping on his pile. Miss Dottie Daly grew daisies by the bunch, discovered the daisy zebra had been eaten for lunch. Miss Fanny Frenny found, according to the rumor, the silly little circus monkey swinging on her bloomer. <laughs> but everything changed quickly like the turning of the tide. The night the abbot shed caught fire and Emmy rose inside. From high above the abbot's fire Excuse me. From high above the abbot's farm, the tiger saw the shed. The light, the sight of the smoking fire triggered something in his head. He jumped through flames a thousand times back in circus days. So he ran past all the people and he leapt into the blaze. Then everybody panicked. Help, help. What can we do? When from the raging fire something burst into their view, it was the most amazing sight 
and everyone froze, and they saw the tiger saving little Emma Rose. The tiger's risky rescue changed everybody's mind. The animals weren't bothersome. The animals were kind. So they lived together side by side. They all got along. It seemed like so anything could possibly go wrong. Then Little Red the Messenger came running with a word. Apparently a circus ship had sunk from what he had heard. The animals are on the boat. They swam into the bay. The greedy owner wants them back. He'll be here any day. So the people called a meeting in a quickly haunted plan. No animal that came ashore would sail off with that man. There's that mean guy. The next day at the crack of dawn, a ship at the pier. And up the lane marched Mr. Payne when voice was loud and clear. I am the circus owner. My ship sank in the murk. I've come to find my animals and put them back to work. He hiked until he came into the corner of the town. His face was red. He scratched his head. He stood there with a frown. Mr. Payne looked high and low. But still he couldn't see the 15 animals from, well, how do you pronounce that word? Minergy. Oof. I need to get hooked on phonics. He ran around the alleys. He searched the village square. He checked the chicken coop. His animals were not there. Mr. Payne was tuckered out. His heavy chest was heavy. His little red stepped up and said, I think your boat is leaving. Oh boy. He ran off a fit of rage. His ship was leaving sight. So he jumped into a rowboat and he rowed with all his might. And from that day, they like to say their lives were free of pain. It was happy, peaceful place upon the isle in Maine. I guess that's the end. Abby, what you think about the book? Good. Um, this was called The Circus Fiction.